Amen. Amen. As we mentioned, we have purpose. And as most of you know, um, I farm for a living. And so uh, this tool here, anybody have an idea what this might do? I know one in the back. He raised his hand. He's been on, a, on it before. <laughs> All right. It's a soil probe. And, um, and this tool, even though it's small, even though it's not really expensive and as compared to a lot of our other tools, it helps us with the bottom line at the end of the year because we take samples of each field. And that, uh, those samples help us determine how much fertilizer that we put out so that we put enough that we get a good yield and, and not too much where we have expense, oh, more expense than needed. So this, this tool has purpose. Even though it's small, even though we only use it a part of a certain time of the year, it has a reason. It has a, it has a very important purpose. And so it is with our lives. Sometimes uh, we think of ourselves, well, I, I don't really have much to offer God, but you do. We each here have one thing in common, and we have a purpose. It's not the same purpose, but our purpose as the third uh, bricklayer, we are building the kingdom of God. We're a part of the kingdom of God, and that's a grand thing. And, you know, uh, it's a privilege to be a part of that. Uh, Brother Kenneth and his ministry, you know, he's uh, not only is he uh, supporting these young men as they make their march, raising money, for the wounded warrior, uh, throughout the, the 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 summer season, he's taking kayak trips, and he's uh, this is a place where he gets to minister to those uh, men and women that have uh, felt the uh, the effects of, of battle, of combat, of, of trauma, and so forth. And he gets to share the light of the gospel. Then he has to, he is a a source of hope and um, a source of, of healing to those young men and women that might not otherwise come in contact with that. And so each of us have a purpose. And you know, again, it gives us uh, gives us fulfillment. So if you would, we, if you want to read with us this morning, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll be starting with verse 15. And you know what? The Bible uh, tells us about a purpose, and it tells us how we can find that purpose. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses, starting with verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. There's our purpose. What is to stand in that will? And verse 18, it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Thank you for standing for God's Word. And so last, a couple weeks ago, we talked about walking in love as Christ did. And then uh, the week after that, we talked about walk in the, as children of the light. In other words, this journey, we're on a journey uh, in, our, in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We are on a journey, a day by day, a new day. Each day we get to experience, and uh, each day we get to experience the goodness of God, and we walk in Him, and we seek Him, and we uh, communicate with Him. And, uh, and so in, this, in, Ephesians, in these verses, we talk about walk in wisdom. And as, in, as individuals, as a church, we want to follow God's plan and God's will for our lives. As we talked about last week, we as a church, we want to follow God's plan. We want to be uh, uh, walking according to his plan for us, that we fulfill the purpose that he has for this church and as far as the community, as in far as the lives of our church members, as far as reach, uh, helping support those that are reaching into the uttermost parts of the world. We want to support them as a church. We want to fulfill the purpose that God has for us. Yeah. And we want to follow God's will for us personally. In order for us as a church to follow God's plan, we personally have to follow his plan for ourselves, our personal lives. And the Bible says walk circumspectly. That is to walk diligently, carefully, accurately, investigating uh, something with great care or alertness. In other words, it's not a random walk. In other words, we watch our steps. We watch how we conduct ourselves in this world that we live. Not as fools, but wise. And, you know, we have the Bible speaks a lot about the foolish and wise. Jesus spoke about the foolish and the wise. And an example of this is found in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken, liken him unto a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds beat and blew and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. 
And so we know that like Jesus said, a wise person hears God's word and obeys God's word. And listen to me, it's God's word. The, the purpose of God's word is to direct us and to challenge us and to convict us. And we have too many people in this world that uh, this word has come to change me. I'm not here to change God's word. Amen. I'm not here to alter God's word. I'm not. I'm not wise like God. I'm, I'm selfish in my, I'm nearsighted. I'm selfish in my thinking. But God is all wisdom. He, yes, he, he made this world. He put it together. He knows what works and he knows what will not work. Yes. Amen. And so the word of God is to change me. Not I'm not here to change God's That's word. Right. I, I, I pray. Let me tell you something. I, I do my very best, everything within me, to make sure when I speak God's word, I speak it with accuracy. I want to do my very best to represent it as it was written. Amen. So if you want to know what to pray about, pray for your pastor that I represent God's word as it is, that I preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I depend on Brother Al. Amen. He's going to back me up. I want to live according to God's word. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 8 and 9 and 10, it says, Give instruction to the wise and he will still be wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, yes, yes. and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Yes. Amen? And so part of the Christian life is to empty our life of ourself. Uh, just as I, if I were to empty all this water out, this cup would then be empty. When I'm empty before God, then He can fill me yes, with His right. knowledge and His yes. wisdom and His yes. love and His grace. So otherwise, I'm going to be bound by my own thinking, by all my own, again, my own narrow thoughts, my own short sightedness, my own selfish thoughts. Yes. But when I empty myself before God, He can fill me yes. with His wisdom. Amen. Yes, I am. It's impo It's possible. It's possible to be intelligent but not very wise. That's right. Amen. Amen. But we want to be wise with God. Amen. Yes. We want to be wise with God. Wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. And I know in this, ha in this, in this house, in this sanctuary, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made by us collectively throughout the day and throughout the year and throughout the coming week. And you know what? We can know this, that God will give us the wisdom yes, to will. navigate through those yes. Those, all those decisions that we are facing. Amen? Amen. We have confidence in that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. And from childhood, Paul, the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. And from childhood, you have, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, with, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? And so as we mentioned a few weeks ago, we talked about walking in the light. Being guided by wisdom is walking in the light. Yeah. In other words, God illuminates our path. He gives us the the, the He gives us the knowledge to, to make a decision, the decision that brings glory and honor to Him. Yes. James chapter 3 and verse 13 gives us the description again of this wisdom that we are seeking. It says in verse 13, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, This, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Verse 16, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing will be there. But wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. That's the wisdom I want to have in my life. That that comes from above. That that is peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. Amen. When I yield myself to God, then I begin to walk in that wisdom. Amen. And whenever it, to, whenever we're uh, living a self-serving life, it, it said we'll have envy, we'll be <laughs> self-seeking, and we'll uh, boast and, and boast and lie about things. But you know what? This is demonic. This is what Satan likes to use when we walk in our own, in our own, when we're bound by our own thinking. Amen. Without the influence of the heaven above. Amen. Yes. We gain wisdom by asking God, and He gives us the wisdom, the, the gift of wisdom, the gift of wisdom. First James chapter one and verse fifteen. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God 
who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it shall be given to him. Aren't we, aren't we thankful yes. that God gives wisdom? Yes. So how does he do that? You know what? He does that, yes, again, by God's word. And you know, there's been times when I've prayed for wisdom, and you know, I find myself in a, just a, a just an unusual circumstance. But you know what? Uh, God's God will lead us through that. And you know, uh, that's how you learn wisdom. That's how wisdom comes. Whenever we get in those circumstances, where we know we have to depend on God. And we call out to God and say, Lord, guide my step. I want to bring glory and honor to you. I want to do the right thing. I want to treat others as I would want them to treat me. I want to, when it's all said and done, I want to bring, I don't want to bring shame to your name. I want to bring glory to you. Yes. And God guides each step. And yes. through that circumstance, we gain wisdom. Amen. So when we pray for wisdom and it seems like the world is upside down, don't be alarmed, amen? God is going to give you wisdom through those circumstances. He's going to help you navigate through that when we call on Him, when we yield ourselves to Him, amen? Verse, uh, Psalms 119 and verse 60, 169, it says, Let my cry come before you. O Lord, give me understanding according to your word. When we cry out to God, he will give us that understanding. And you know, there's times when, uh, again, uh, he opens up God's word to us. There are times when he brings wise counsel into our life. Amen? Yes. He'll bring someone into us. Or he'll give us, he'll, we'll, we'll know where to find it. Uh, God will help us with that. So when we cry out, God will answer. He's got a variety of ways. And then there's times in the wee hours of the morning, it just hit me like, bam, this is what to do. And it's like, it's so simple, yet I hadn't thought of it before. But I know it's God speaking to me. Amen. So when we, when we open up ourselves to God, He will speak to us if we'll listen. Amen. He is speaking. Are we listening? Amen. That's a better way. He is speaking to us. Are we listening? Amen. So how do fools walk? Psalms 53 and 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. I don't know how anybody can look up at a night sky and see the, the stars and, the, and just the wonder, the, the, the size and the, and the power that it takes and think, well, it's just all happened by accident. I don't see how anybody can step into nature and see the beauty of nature and say, well, this, this, just, this just happened. As, a, as I said, uh, as most of you know, uh, farm and part of that, we raise cattle. And we'll, so we see the cycle of life. And, I uh, get to experience seeing a new birth, a new a new calf born, and how all that works. I just I say to myself, you know, it's just the hand of God. Uh, it's just a, His work. It's His creation. He put it together. And you know what? Uh, I'm thankful for the wisdom of God. Whenever we see the complexity of, of nature and the animals and all the things that go on, there is a God. Amen. And we see His handiwork. It shouts to me, there is a God. Amen. It shouts to me, there is a God. And I pray that this service this morning shouts to you that there is a God and He cares. Amen. Because He does care. It's one thing to know there's a God in heaven, but something else to know that He cares for us personally. Amen. I'm confident of that this morning because He paid the price, right? How does a fool walk? Proverbs 14 and 9. Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. Fools mock at sin. Fools make fun of sin. Sin is not to be toyed with. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 6 and 27, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Just as sure as you grab a hold of a fire, you will feel the effect. And just as sure as that we play with sin, we'll feel the effect. Yes. Amen. We're not to be toyed with. It's not to be played with. It's not something to take lightly. It's not something to say, well, uh, just this one time, we've got to know that sin is what caused the fall of man. Sin is why Jesus Christ gave his life. It's because of our sins. And he gave his life so that we can live victorious. He gave his life so that we can have that redemption that we sung about. Amen. And you know what? He gave us, he gives us daily. He gives us the victory. He gives us the grace to, to, step, to step away from temptation. The Bible says with every temptation, with every temptation comes a door of escape. Yeah, amen. Yeah, you can't see yeah. that door, but there's a door right there. Amen. Right. Just as sure as the world. And that's his word. He says when that temptation comes, when it comes strong, and we're not sure what to do, this is what we know. We can look for that door of escape. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We can call upon the name of the Lord. God, I need grace this hour. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God, I need all of you right now, Lord. And you know what? He is faithful. Yeah. Just like his great... Uh, when we transition to this time, he, saw, he played 
great is his faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Yes. And I know that he's faithful to his word. Yes. He's faithful yes. to his character this yes. morning. Yes. Sin is not to be toyed with. The ver uh, Proverbs 15 and 5. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who re receives correction is prudent. In other words, there are times when we do need correction. And you know, we need the conviction and the correction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When people, uh, uh, people again that we respect, people that, uh, that God has put in our life that uh, have traveled the road ahead of us. When they uh, offer advice, we need to listen to it when it's for our own good. Amen. Sometimes that advice is not pleasant. Sometimes it's hard to receive. But at the same time, we have to recognize, hey, maybe they're speaking into me. Maybe God has ordained them to speak into me to, to keep me from uh, hitting a, um, a, a stump pole, let's say, amen, or a dead end. Amen. Yeah. Luke 11, 39 and 40, it says, Then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees, you make outside the cup of the cup and the dish clean, but on your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? In other words, they were complaining because the disciples had ate a little bit of handful of grain because they were hungry without washing their hands. But Jesus could look into their heart. Even though on the outside everything was in place, every 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 hair was in place, all, their outfits were in place, they were so careful to wash and make sure they were good on the outside, but Jesus could see in their heart it was not clear, clean. Amen. Our priority is to keep the inside clean. Amen. And our, our priority is, again, whenever we... Uh, uh, whenever we do sin, that we ask for forgiveness. Whenever we uh, do fall, that we uh, uh, ask the Lord to help us to get up. Ask for forgiveness and give us the strength to overcome. Amen? Yes. And these are just a few descriptions to describe foolishness. Of course, there's many throughout the Bible, especially in the book of Proverbs. But the brevity of life is a strong argument for making the best use of our time. Yes. What is our purpose? Life is short. Life is short. James 4 and 14, it says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Life is short. And you know what? He, he uh, uh, told the Ephesians to walk circumspectly, not as fools, to be careful, to walk through life careful, uh, not, not just rushing through life, but be intentional in what they done. And you know what? We only have one life. It will soon pass. And only what is done for Christ will last. Yeah. We must work while we have opportunity. Amen. We can say, well, this is the first day of the rest of my life. Or we could say, you know, I have today. Amen. I have today. Let me make the best of today. And I'm not against planning for the future. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is that they call this the present. There's a reason they call it the, pre the, the present because it is a present. We have the present of time today. And you know what? We need to make use of it. That's what the scriptures tell us. And you know what? There are times uh, when reality is hard uh, to face. And you know what? Sometimes we uh, want to to take or do something that gets us out of the reality of the moment. But you know what? We need to, we need to live in the moment. If Jesus Christ taught us anything, we need to live in the moment. Amen. And he will give us the strength to do that and the wisdom to carry that out. Jesus said in John 9 and chapter, verse 4, it says, I must work the works of him, to, of, of him who sent me, speaking of God the Father, while it is day, the night is coming when no man work. And you know, there are, again, uh, we need to work while it's day in my, in my occupation. Most of what we do is during the daylight hours. And we know that there's a certain amount that has to be done during those daylight hours. When the evening comes, or, uh, there's certain things we cannot do after dark. Even though you have headlights, there's just certain things you cannot do after dark. And so it is with life. We need to make a use of our time. There needs to be a sense of urgency in our life that we don't have a bunch of time to waste. Amen. We need to use each moment to the glory of God. Yes. And so this is a psalm that actually uh, Moses wrote, Psalms 90 and verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Lord, teach us to, wisdom, uh, to number our days. Remember Moses um, lived to be 120 years old. He, he spent those first 40 years in uh, Pharaoh's household. He learned 
to be a, he's learned the ways of a king. He learned the ways of privilege. He was educated with the best education that was available at the time. And then, you know, I believe it was in his heart. I believe he knew it was his purpose to deliver his people. And so uh, two guys were arguing, or, or, or an Egyptian was abusing one of the Hebrews, and that he killed that Egyptian, and he buried him in the sand, thinking that nobody would know, thinking this might bring deliverance. But Pharaoh found out he had killed somebody, and I want your life now, Moses. And Moses left, and he went into the wilderness. He went into the desert, and there he spent 40 years uh, being humble. 40 years he'd become a meek man. 40 years not working with a king, but working for his father-in-law, taking care of goats and sheep in the wilderness. And you know, there were valuable lessons during that time. And you may be in a time in your life when you feel like you're in the desert. You just feel like there's nothing... Happened. It's just the same old, same old when life ever changed. Let me tell you, as Moses said, Lord, teach us to number our days. If you're in a desert time, know that God will speak to you. Yes. God has a purpose for that. There was a time in our life, uh, says Tammy, you know, where I just felt like I was on the backside of the desert. The only news I heard was old news. It just nothing happened. Nothing was ever changed. But you know what? The door opened to, to move out of that. And you know what? The day, day came when God spoke to Moses in that bush that was burning but was not consumed and said, I want you to lead my people out. Amen. All the days leading to that got Moses to that point where he would be a meek man, knowing God knowing ahead of time the hard-headed group he was going to be dealing with, the group of complainers he was dealing with. And old Moses might have said, you know what? The sheep and goats were a lot less trouble. <laughs> Amen. But God prepared him. And he, and he led the children of Israel. He spent the next 40 years leading the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. So you may say, well, this was an area in my life where it just doesn't seem like anything was happening. Teach us to number our days, yes. Lord. Help us to gain wisdom, even from the same old, same old, even from the seemingly I'm on a dead-end street. Yes. Know that, put it in God's hands yes. and say, Lord, teach me what you need to teach me. Amen? Yes. The scripture said, redeem the days. One way we can redeem our time is to identify worthless things. Psalms 119 and verse 37, it says, Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. There's never been a generation that had more distractions than we do today. There's never been a generation. There's always been distractions, but we have them by the multitude. The little devices that we have that help us with our work and keeping up with everything, they are created to grab your attention. Amen? And they do well. They do it, and they do it well. And if we're not careful, they not only they are a tool. They are something that's very valuable and navig again in our in our lives to help us do the things that we need to do. But they also can be a huge attention grabber and get us on that work, uh, get our eyes on worthless things. Amen. And so one of the objectives we just came out of just a few weeks ago of prayer and fasting is to help us to focus on God's plan for us, yeah. to, kind of, to break the old routine that we uh, are able to identify some of those things in our life that's just taking up time. They'll bear no fruit. They haven't bear fruit. They will not bear fruit. We need to root them up out of our life and, and, and put attention to those things that bear fruit for the glory of God. Amen? I don't have to tell you, uh, but we can spend a lot of time on worthless things such as TV and social media, video games and YouTube, and on and on and on. I'm not saying, I, I just, we need to do this in moderation, amen? We don't need to spend all of our time staring at a screen because worthless things can promote envy and greed and laziness, amen? Amen? Amen. Redeeming the time. There's always time to do God's will. And it starts with awareness that we have limited time. We think we've got eternity. Yeah. There'll be a day when we have eternity, but that's not today. Amen? Yeah. And so we talk about knowing God's will, uh, knowing what God wants us to do. And that takes hearing from God. And you say, Brother Chris, how do you hear from God? How do you know when it's God speaking to you? You know, it, t it, it takes... Um, it takes having communion with God the Father. It takes doing it not just when we're in a, a, a crisis or in a jam, but that, that daily walk with Him throughout the day that we talk, a walk and talk with Him. Uh, my wife, we've been married for how many years, Sister? How many? 36. Can you believe that? 36 years. But time flies. Amen. And so 36 years we've been married. We dated, uh, what, two or three years ahead of that. Amen. And so... I was just sitting there on a pew getting ready for the service to start. My wife's over here. 
And when she talked, I recognized her voice out of everybody else because I'm familiar with that voice. Been around it for a long time, amen? And so it is with God. Whenever we walk with him and we talk with him, and we, 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 we can recognize it because we, we've heard this voice before. And we, and we, and we move according to what God uh, speaks to us. And we see the fruit of that. Everybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? You know God impressed you to do something. You, know, you just knew this was God's thing. Amen. For instance, as when we first started this church, when the, and we uh, went to the elementary school, and we seen the small amount that was given to our children, at, uh, the backpack group, God spoke to me as clear as he's ever spoke to me. This is us. We are to supply this, and we did. We have. We've been able to. There was no question. I knew that was God speaking to us. Amen. Then there's been times when God spoke to me, and I did not respond. I drug around. I done other things instead. And you know what? I seen that opportunity come, and then I saw that opportunity go, and I recognized I missed an opportunity. It was God speaking to me, but because I did not move when I should have moved, and I and I felt the weight of that. So there's more than one way we learn, but it takes that, that walk, that daily walk with him. Don't be impatient. Just continue to walk with him. And you know what? Uh, we'll hear his voice. And we'll, it'll come, we'll, our ears will be more in tune. Our spirit will be more in tune when we continue that steadfast walk. Not just when we need something, but when we just want to give God praise and give him glory and say, Lord, you blessed me in so many. I just want to let you know, God, I'm thankful today. I don't, I don't bring anything. I just want to say I'm thankful for your mercy and grace. I'm thankful for your great love for us. I'm thankful for all the things that have brought me to this point, both the trials and the good things, and yes. both the mountains and the valleys. Amen? Yes. Amen. Does that make sense? And you know what? There are many people that are not living in God's will because they don't have time. We have time to do God's will. Matter of fact, he's the one giving me time. We have time to do God's will. In children's church, we had kids that said, I don't have time to do this. I'm thinking, that's one thing kids have is time, amen? Yeah. That's one thing I had a lot of when I was a kid. I had time, amen? I mean, they heard that from somewhere, right? Time is too valuable to waste. The times are evil. I don't have to tell you about that. Immorality. Corruption, violence, and on and on. The days are evil. So what do we do about that? Romans 12 and 21, it says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yeah. You go into a place in your work spot, in your place of influence, where you may be dealing with people that are backstabbers and, and uh, talk out of both sides of their mouth, so to speak, just tell you what you want to hear. You don't, overcome, you don't overcome it by playing their game. You overcome, you overcome evil by doing good. Amen. You hold the line. You hold your integrity. Amen. God sees it. The boss may not see it. The higher-ups may not see it. The person next, but the person next door probably does see it. Amen. Yeah. We hold our men. Our, we maintain our integrity. Amen. Because you know what? When we think about God's will, sometimes we think about doing some great thing. I was reading about, uh, shared it with our uh, Wednesday night class about George Mueller where he felt a burden for the, for the orphans of the day. And he had no funding from the government. He had no funding from a big organization, but he began it. And by faith, and by faith, he was able to, to bring orphans in. And over the course of his career, so to speak, of his lifetime, when he worked with uh, orphans, he, over 10,000 orphans come into his care. He was able to help them. And not only that, other people, uh, other areas began orphanages also. At the time that he started, there was only room for, uh, there's only places in that uh, country of England for about a little over 3,000 orphans, orphans. And after uh, after he began his work and over a period of time that others began to do the work, over 100,000 had places at the time of his death. He did something big. We say, well, I want to do something big. But you know what? The way it starts with being. Amen. It's no, it doesn't always start with doing. It starts with being. Amen. Being in touch with God. Being the servant that he wants to be, us to be. Amen. And whenever we become that person, then we begin to step into what he wants us to do. Amen. Sometimes we get the cart ahead of the horse, so to speak. We want to do. But God, God puts a high premium on character. He wants us to be a people of character. And he wants that to get worked out before we begin to do. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the, of the Lord is. And that's a common question. What is God's will for my life? 
This I know for sure. When you're in a place of employment, you do your job to the best of your ability. Amen. No need to invite anybody to church if you're not doing your job because they're having to pick up for you. And I doubt you're, they're going to hear you. Amen. So you do your job to the best of your ability. Be a professional about what you do. How can you witness to others if they're having to do your job? Treat others as you want to be treated. We know that's the will of God, that you treat others as you want to be treated. God desires to walk humbly and with justice. God wants us to live a life of gratitude. Yes, yes. yes there are struggles here in this room. Yes, there are those who have been through some deep valleys and dark nights. Yes. But you know what? We need, to have a, we need to live that life of gratitude. God has done too much for us. Yes. If it were not for that mercy yes. and grace, where yes. would we be? Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen? I'm thankful for his hand in my life. Yes. He wants us to live a life of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 16 and 18, it says, Rejoice always. Amen. That's not me and Sister Tammy were talking about this week. It's not always to rejoice, but the Bible says rejoice always because I know where my help and my hope is coming yes. from. Amen. I know yes. that this world is not just, it's not just this world. I'm going to a better place. Yes. Amen. Yes. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks yes. for this is the will of God yes. in Christ Jesus for you. It's God's will that we rejoice. It's God's will that we continue to pray. If God hears me when I pray, why should I keep on praying? If you heard me the first time, why should I keep on praying? Because it keeps our head in the game. It helps us to know that he is our help. It's yeah. by his hand. Amen. Yeah. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Yeah. But how do I specifically find what God's will is for me? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable of God, to God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. You know what? God often reveals his will one step at a time. You just have to forgive me. I was a children's church pastor for a long time. Got to have a little fun sometimes. Y'all good with that, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So how do we find God's will for our lives? We find it by remaining pliable and flexible. I had a lot of fun with, with this stuff when I was a kid. That was before the video games, and this is kind of the sort of stuff you use to entertain yourself. But you could cut it, and you could run it through them little things and make stars and spaghetti noodles and looking stuff and you could put it in little molds and you could make all kinds of cool stuff like that. Now if I were to do it with my hands, it'd just kind of look pretty first grade, <laughs> kindergarten, right? But with the right tools, you could do some neat stuff. To find God's will, we stay flexible to God's yes. voice. Yes. We stay flexible to God's word. And you know what? Um, Sister Tammy and I have been on an incredible journey. We started, it started out with a phone call from her pastor saying, I want you to come and work with our kids. And that's something that took a long time to make a decision. And some people, there's not really much of that, Brother Chris, is there? It was to us. It just was to us. And you know, that started a journey. Day by day, we follow God's plan for us. Day by day, we see what he... Uh, what he has for us to do day by day and he may call you into something you never even dreamed of but we got to stay flexible and pliable that our heart doesn't get hard that our, our mind doesn't close out what God has for us let me yes. tell you something God has a plan for each of us yes. if we'll stay flexible and you know as well as I do if we leave this out to the air it'll get what? hard yes. gets in the carpet so it's seemingly like forever right? Mm -hmm. mama ain't very happy when you do that and so it is. That's why we pray, we rejoice, and live that life of gratitude. That's why we get a, a daily dose of God's Word, that we stay flexible. Brother Bill had his 87th birthday, and he says to himself, well, I just, want to, I just want to contribute. He has contributed so many ways since we, uh, since we started here. He's just been an encouragement to us. Uh, there was a period of time when he uh, couldn't come for a little while there, and he was no longer <laughs> greeting people. And man, it's just like, uh, we lost a right arm for a while there, you know? And so we have a purpose. The devil will tell you it doesn't matter. Let me tell you something, it does matter. Each little part has each little part is important. Yes. We have somebody that brings the donuts. That's a big deal, amen. It's yeah. the most anticipated person here, amen. <laughs> the one that brings donuts, right? Where are they? Where are they? They're right in there. <laughs> 
And so Wednesday night we have those that prepare, not only prepare lessons, but prepare a meal for our kids and our young people uh, so that they can come and, and not only their minds get full, but their heart and their hearts get full, but their little bellies get full too. Mm -hmm. It's all important. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you're here, somebody's looking for you yeah. and you mean something to them. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we know God's will? How do we follow God's will? We stay flexible and we use what God has given us. And those opportunities that come, you might, you're prone to say, well, I, I really need to, I, I, I can't do that right now. Or, That's beyond me. That's beyond my ability. Stay flexible. Be willing to step out. Amen. What did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, come, follow me. Yes. He didn't give them a big lecture. He didn't give them a five-year plan. He didn't say, this is what you're going to be in 10 years. He said, come, follow me. In turn, they ate with Jesus Christ. They listened to his words. They seen him reach out to the lepers. They seen him take criticism. They seen him uh, they see him in early in the morning and late at night when he's not with the camp, but he's to himself and he's speaking to the Father. Amen? Yes. And that's that journey that I'm talking about. Come follow me. Come follow me and see where we end up. It, it, it's going it, it's gonna to astound you if we just follow him one step at a time. Yes. Stay pliable. Stay flexible. And be not, it's, it's yeah, we, we're prone to fear, but we should not fear the will of God. Amen? God often reveals his will one step at a time. Our last verse that we read. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 is the opposite of what we started with. To walk circumspectly is to be careful. That's the opposite of being drunk. To be careful, to be intentional. And we know that drunkenness are those, those things that create the same affecting us. We know that too much alcohol has impact in, over our entire body, affecting our thinking and our motor skills. Drunkenness causes us to make poor decisions. Amen? Alcohol can cause us to want to fight or laugh at everything. It distorts things. Alcohol can cause you to lose control of your body. It affects how we think. But to be filled with the Spirit also has an effect over our entire body. The Spirit cleanses us. The Spirit leads us. The Spirit motivates us to do right. How are we going to live in this crazy world? How are we going to live a, a Spirit-filled life whenever life is so draining, whenever uh, the, the, emotion, the emotional weight that each of, each of us is under is draining day by day? How are we going to maintain that? We're going to, be, we're going to maintain it by being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? The Spirit of God, just as we sung, tells us that we are God's children. It affirms that in our hearts and minds. When we get down and out and we're a deficit, deficit in some area, we know that we have a Father that supplies our needs. Doesn't supply our greeds, but supplies our needs. Amen. According to His riches and glory. He's not going to run out financially. He's not going to run out emotionally. He's not going to run out of grace. He's not going to run out of mercy. He's not going to run out of wisdom to give us the direction that we need day by day. Amen. To be filled with the Spirit helps us to pray. It helps us to worship. It helps us to under, intercede for those that are around us. And it helps us pray when we don't. We've, I'm sure you've been in a place, I know I find myself in a place, I just can't put it in words. My heart is full, my mind is racing, but I cannot put it in words. And you know what? Whenever the, the Holy Spirit steps in and prays as I need to pray. As we mentioned, these complex uh, decisions that we're or circumstances we find ourselves we're not sure what direction at the, at the time but when we come to God when he brings that order he helps us with our thinking that we can think straight amen yes. anybody ever uh, experienced that yes. amen it's available to us through the spirit the Holy Spirit helps us to be more like Christ guiding us into all truth yes. amen yes. and that's our desire this morning we want to walk as wise we don't want to waste our time because time is precious. And we do not know, I do not know how many days I have on this earth. Amen. Amen. Whether it be by natural death or the coming of the Lord, I want to make good use of it. Amen. Amen. So let us use our time wisely. Let us walk in wisdom that God provides. Let us use our life for the glory of God. And we know that's available through his riches and glory. When we're facing the realities of life, now, many people use drunkenness to, to escape the realities of life. 
You know, the realities of life can be harsh. The circumstance that you're in can be very heavy. But I'm thankful that we have hope. We have the one that Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are labor are heavy laden. Amen. Take my yoke upon me, and I will give you rest. When life gets heavy, and we're prone to reach out to something to bring just a minute, just a little bit of relief, let us fall on him. Amen. Let us cry out to him and say, Lord, you see where I'm at. I need your strength. I need you with I need your, I need to sense your Holy Spirit even now. Amen. Keep me in the moment. Your family needs you to keep you in a moment. You need to keep in a moment. Amen. Because time is short and time is passing. And we don't need to be off. Our minds and body doesn't need to be in La La Land. We need to be present for that hour, that moment. Amen. 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 We have purpose. Don't you ever think you are a mistake by any man. We have purpose. God put us here for a reason. And he wants to mold us to be more like Christ day by day. Aren't you glad he's thankful? Uh, aren't you thankful that he is uh, patient in that process? I may ever can say God has been patient with me. Amen. God's patient with us. He's patient with us. Amen. I'd like for you to stand if you would. I don't think I've done this since we've been here. But this is what I want you to do this morning. If you will, I'm not here to put anybody on the spot by any means. But your pastor needs wisdom. Your pastor needs a new filling of the Holy Spirit. We want this church to be all it can be for, for the glory of God. We want to, as a man said, we're building a wonderful cathedral to the glory of God. We're building something that we want to be a refuge for this city. We want this to be a refuge for this community where the love of God goes out and, and ministers to people, that reaches out to people. We want to be that light. We want to be truth. As I mentioned earlier, I want to speak the word of God in truth. Amen. I want to speak it as he has me to speak it. And if you would, would you please pray for me this morning? As many of you feel comfortable to come, would you please come? I need your, I need your prayers today. I need to be filled with